aortic cannulation and decannulation. The material, instruments and sutures needed for this procedure are described in your workbook. In order to make the procedure as realistic as possible, we are going to be using a perfused pig's descending aorta and a simulated bypass circuit. For this you will need an annex vascular jig which has been modified by having one of the spigots bored out allowing it to be connected to a drip set. Your pig aorta has previously been prepared by having all the vascular branches ligated and is mounted on the jig and secured with cable ties or heavy silk ties. A bag of artificial blood is placed in a pressure bag. The tubing is connected and the aorta is filled with blood which is pressurised to 80 millimetres of mercury. Some leakage from the pig's aorta is to be expected. You can create a simulated bypass circuit using a bag of saline or water connected to bypass tubing and clamped. A standard aortic cannula is required. Once you've established your perfused pig's aorta, the next stage will be to perform a purse string for cannulation. Using a 3-0 proline, create a partial thickness aortic purse string of approximately one centimeter in diameter. Full thickness penetration of the aortic wall will cause troublesome bleeding. The two arms of the suture are brought together the needles cut off and the suture held in a snugger. The second purse string is performed once again partial thickness approximately one millimeter outside the existing purse string. For this purse string, the ends of the sutures end up on the operator's side and once again are held in a snugger.
we use an 11 blade knife to make the aortotomy because as you will see it is approximately the same diameter as the aortic cannula. Raise a transverse adventitial flap within the purse string and then make a simple stab incision and cover this with the flap. The aortic cannula is then simply introduced underneath the flap. The snugger on the assistant's side is tightened. It is held against the aortic cannula. The two are tied together with a heavy silk suture using the locating grooves at the base of the aortic cannula. The aortic cannula is now secure. Once secured, the aortic cannula is clamped and the cap removed. The clamp is released to allow the cannula to fill with blood and expel any air. The arterial line from your bypass circuit is now brought up, the clamp is removed and the tubing allowed to slowly fill with fluid. Once the tubing is full and air has been expelled, the tubing is joined to the arterial cannula. The system is checked for air and the clamp is then removed from the arterial cannula. Arterial cannulation and connection to the bypass circuit is now complete. When you are ready to decannulate, clamp the aortic cannula and ask your assistant to support the cannula and the clamp. Cut the retaining suture and loosen the snuggers. At all times support the aortic cannula to prevent it being dislodged accidentally. Controlling the aortotomy, carefully withdraw the cannula and ask your assistant to snug down. Snug down on your side to achieve hemostasis once this has been done, the sutures can be tied. A full thickness mattress suture is used to underrun the secured purse string and control the aortic intima. You can check the inside of your aortotomy by dividing the aorta. First of all, remember to turn off the blood supply. You should see a nice smooth closure with no evidence of intimal flap.